Okay, I had some people ask me about grids, like what's the deal with grids, and, and so I wanted to make this video, but it, this is a little bit different. I actually want to work some problems related to grid factors and, and let you all see uh, firsthand how this works. Now, the first thing you need to understand when we're talking about grids is that scatter radiation hates you. It wants to destroy your life as an x-ray tech, and your job as an x-ray tech is to exterminate it with, with extreme prejudice, right? Um, so scatter's bad. Um, scatter's your number one cause of occupational dose. Um, scatter uh, con contributes mostly fog to the x-ray. And there's three things that cause scatter. Um, two of them we can control and one of them we can't control for except for the use of grids. So number one is a high KVP. Number one, high KVP um, is going to uh, increase our scatter, right? Uh, Increased field size. If I increase the field size, um, I will be increasing the amount of scatter. So it's appropriate to collimate correctly. This improves both contrast and patient dose. Um, and then by improving patient dose, I mean it reduces patient dose. So it increases contrast and reduces patient dose. And then finally, the one that we can't control for is an increased body part thickness. And so I'm going to uh, abbreviate that as uh, SEP. This is a term that I'm borrowing from radiation therapy. It means just a separation, body part thickness. Now, this one I can control for, right? I can set techniques that have an optimum KVP. I can collimate appropriately. But what do I do if the patient is a fatty, right? And the answer is I need to use a grid. So grids are going to help us reduce contrast. And people, um, I mean, improve contrast. People sometimes make too big a deal out of this. But basically, a grid is just a comb, right? Or like a coffee filter, right? And it's only letting certain things uh, between the lines of the grid, right? So if an x-ray is going uh, along the path that we would expect, it gets through the grid. If it's scattered and it's going off in a funny direction, it gets stopped by these lead lines inside the grid. So everything that we're doing when we, when we work with grids is considering these uh, little tiny lines inside the grid. Um, so people talk about grid cutoff. If, for example, I do not have the grid uh, straight, if I have the grid itself crooked, right, I could inadvertently cut off things just using the grid, right? That would be a problem. So anytime I'm using a grid, especially in portable work, I want to make sure that I'm as perpendicular as possible to the grid, right? Now, the math um, is helpful um, for us to think about uh, with, with grids. Um, and so uh, there's two basic problems that we can consider when we think about grids. The first is figuring out what the, uh, what the grid ratio is for the grid that we're using. And then the second thing is to actually calculate a technique if we're using a grid, right? So those are the two things that we'll look at today. Um, and before we kind of get into the weeds with that, one thing I want to point out is that a, a grid is what it's doing is it's reducing scatter, as I've indicated here. It is not getting rid of blur, right? That's a slightly different thing. That has to do with spatial resolution and stuff like that. So the main thing that grids are doing are they, they're improving contrast, right? So they're increasing contrast by getting rid of scatter, right? They're not necessarily having impact on spatial resolution. So they're improving, spatial re they're improving contrast resolution, but not necessarily spatial resolution. They're, in other words, they're not reducing blur or unsharpness, right? The other thing they are doing, and I can't stress this is enough, anytime we use a grid, we are increasing patient dose, right? We're increasing patient dose. We're getting rid of scatter, but we're going to have to do something to compensate for all the x-rays that we're getting rid of, right? So let's get down to the weeds with some math. If a grid is manufactured with 30 micrometers or microns of lead grid, grid strips sandwiched between interspace material that is 300 micrometers thick with a height of 2.4 millimeters, what is the grid ratio? And I put hint, it's in the book. The book that we use uh, in my class is called Radiography in the Digital Age um, by Quinn B. Carroll. Great little textbook. And this is found on page like 306, 307 in that area. And it's asking us to apply a formula. So here's the first formula that I'll introduce today. It's the grid ratio formula. And you know what? I don't really memorize this formula. I always have to look it up in the book. Because what I remember is that whatever, however I use this formula, it has to give me a whole number. It has to give me a whole number. In fact, I know what whole numbers it has to give me. It has to give me either 
a 5, an 8, a 12, or a 16. A 5, an 8, or a 12, or a 16. And so uh, this is not magic or anything like that. This is just um, knowing about grids and how they work because there's only certain types of grid ratios, right? There's 5, 8, 12, and 16. That's roughly the grid ratios that we use. And so um, it should give me one of those numbers. It should give me a whole number in that range. Now, every now and then they get a little fancy and they throw you a different whole number, right? But it should be the whole number um, uh, because what we're calculating has to be that. So if I, if I set it up wrong, then I will not get a whole number and I'll know that I've done something wrong. I can just redo it real quickly. So um, this, this problem is actually asking us to do a little bit of conversion as well. So what is it asking us? What is the height and what is the distance being indicated? Right. Well, let's go back up to the, our little illustration here. The height that we're talking about right, um, is this distance here. It's the height, in essence, that the x-ray photon has to traverse to get through the grid. Right. That's our height. What is the distance? It's this little window right here that the x-rays have to travel through. That's the distance. The distance is not the thickness, in other words, of the grid strips. I point that out because um, they always like to throw in some distractors on these problems. You'll notice that there's three things here, right? Um, and, and so I would not want to, for example, mistake and put the grid strips in when what the distance I'm actually interested in is what they're calling the interspace material, right? So the numbers that I'm interested in are this, um, 300 microns, and the 2.4 millimeters. That's why I said that we're going to need to do some conversions here. So we need to hop our zero over. I'm going to convert to microns and calculate for microns. So to convert from millimeters to microns, I will hop this over three steps. One, two, three. So I wind up with um, 2,400 microns over what in this instance? 300 microns, so I can just plug that into my calculator, 2400 divided by 300 equals 8. So the answer is this is an 8 by 1 grid, right? That is the correct answer to this problem, 8 by 1 grid. Um, all right, well, let's, uh, let's do another one. If, it's a, if a grid is manufactured with a height of 2 millimeters and the grid strips are equal to 35 microns, 400 microns of inner space material, what is the grid ratio? Now again, I said the height is going to be this number two, right? And again, I'm gonna go ahead and do the conversion, convert it to microns. So I'll make it 2,000, right? I'm just adding three zeros to the two. I'm gonna put that over what? And in this instance, I'm gonna put it over that. So I've got that over that, um, 400. And again, I said it should be a whole number. I, I haven't written my microns out here, and the reason I haven't written microns out here is because they just cancel each other out, so because all we're interested in is a whole number, and I get five, right? The answer there is five. I kind of did it ahead of time, but 200, or 2,000, I'm sorry, divided by 400, five, so this is a five by one grid. All right, so that's, a, that's it pretty much for the, uh, the grid ratio stuff. Now these next problems are actually asking us to do some nitty gritty kind of stuff with technique, right? And that's really where kind of we earn the big bucks as x-ray techs. Um, so the way that I remember um, this is what we call a Bucky factor or grid factor. Um, Bouchon lists some off that are averages that I, I like. The first thing is to think about non-grid. I'm not using a grid. What, well, the Bucky factor for that will be one, right? Because whatever the technique is, the technique will be just that, one. If I use a grid, even a five by one grid, I've just doubled the mass. These factors are going to be applied to the mass. So the second that I pull out the five by one grid, I just doubled the patient's exposure, right? That's what I mean that it significantly increases patient dose, right? Using a grid just doubled the patient dose, right? From not using a grid. But that's compensated by how much it helps get rid of scatter. And remember, scatter hates you and your job as an x-ray tech is to exterminate it with extreme prejudice. Now, there's not really such a thing as a six by one grid, but I make one up just for, for the purposes of counting easier. And then I say an eight by one grid has a, has a grid factor of four, a 12 by one grid has a grid factor of five, and a 16 by one grid has a grid factor of six. So I can just count one, two, three, four, five, six, and I remember what my grid factors are. Now, in general, right, um, a wall bucky, operates somewhere in this range right here. If I'm using a, a, the wall bucky, 
It's a grid that oscillates or moves while I'm making the exposure. So we use grids quite a bit. Um, anytime we're using a Bucky, we're using a grid. That is the difference between a tabletop technique and a, and a Bucky technique. Um, so anytime I use the Bucky, it is oscillating. It's moving the grid. It's causing these little grid lines to move back and forth as I'm taking the exposure. And so it blurs them out of the image. It has a grid factor of roughly somewhere between three and four. So four most of the time, right? Um, all right, so if a technique requires a 10 mass without a grid, how much mass is required for a five by one grid? Right? Great question. We have to do this all the time, right? Um, so let's go ahead and plug it into our problem formula. We said that if it's 10 mass without the grid, right, that would be 10 times 1 equals 10 mass, right? I'm not going to do that math, but I'm going to say 10 mass, and then I times it by this factor, right? It's just a factor. It's a dimensionless number. It doesn't have any depth to it, but in this case, it's a, it's a grid factor of 2 because I'm using a 5 by 1 grid. That is going to give me 20 mass. If I decide to use a grid to clean up the scatter, then I've got to use uh, 20 mass. Now, if I bump that up to an 8 by 1 grid, Right? What do I do? Well, it's going to be a lot more than that. I got to go 10 mass, right? In this case, the uh, the grid factor or the Bucky factor is four, so I get 40 mass. That's what I mean by it significantly increases spatial dose, but at the same time, it reduces uh, scatter radiation. <clears throat> All right, reaching the image receptor. So. If a technique requires 25 mass in a 12 by 1 grid, what mass is required for a 5 by 1 grid? Oh, they just got evil on us, right? Did they? Oh my goodness, why did they do that? Um, well, it's important for us to know kind of this old versus new way of thinking, right? Um, anytime we're, we're, we're doing this, uh, the way that I generally think about it with, with grids is we're going to have the, uh, the uh, new one on top and the old one on the bottom. Now, if you don't remember that, that's fine. Um, but the important thing to know is just what we've proved up here, that what would I expect the technique to do? So before I ask any kind of prob any kind of math or I start getting into the weeds of a formula or whatever, which is what do I expect it to do? So in this case, I had 25 mass. I was using a, a high ratio grid, right, with a grid factor of five in this case, right? So how much mass would I expect for a 5 by 1? I would expect the mass to go down, right? I would, if I reduce the grid factor, I've reduced the Bucky factor, I would expect it to go down, right? And the only way I can set this up to make it go down is like this. 25 mass, right? And I need to multiply that by these grid factors, by the Bucky factor. So in this case, the new one is a 2, right, from the 5 by 1 grid, and the old one is a 5, right? So I just multiply it by this little fraction. There's a couple of different ways you can do that. In general, the way that I do this type of thing is I say 2 divided by 5, right, times, in this case, 25, and the answer is 10, 10 mass, right? So the correct answer is I just uh, reduced patient dose, right, while at the same time maintaining, no, oh, but what if I want to just completely go crazy here, right, and get, I just want to throw the grid out the window and I don't care about uh, scatter anymore, which was, you know, career-ending decision here because, again, I said scatter hates me and wants to destroy me, so my job is to destroy it with extreme prejudice. But let's say just, you know, for, for, the for hypothetical purposes. All right, well, in this case, I'll say 25 mass, right? And what's the grid factor for no? Well, it's 1, right, over 5. So it's going to be 1 fifth math I can do in my head, 5 mass, right? Right fifth of 25. All right, last, last little question we got on this worksheet. If a technique requires 65 mass with, with an 8 by 1 grid, what mass is required for a 5 by 1 grid? Well, we've already figured this one out. So I'm just going to say 65 mass, right? And in this case, I'm going to have a little fraction, right? And for this fraction, let me see. I'm going to have a what on top? 2 on top. And I'm going to have a 4 on the bottom. So really, I'm just saying half of 65, which is 32.5 mass, right? So I just cut the patient's dose in half in this instance. Oh, but without a grid, let's go crazy again. 65 mass, grid factor is uh, 1 over 4, so a fourth of 65. Let me put my little parentheses so we don't get confused. 
and 16.25. I could just take half of that if I wanted to be fancy, right? And, and that's what the actual technique is. Now, this is really helpful. In general, what we are doing, though, in, in this worksheet doesn't necessarily demonstrate this, is we're adding grids for the most part. We, we start out with a technique, a known technique, and we need to add a grid in order to reduce the, uh, the scatter radiation um, and improve subject contrast. Um, at the image receptor. So something to stress here. Number one, anytime we're using a grid, we're increasing patient dose, but we're doing it to improve contrast. And the last thing I'll point out is nowhere on this worksheet, anywhere does it say anything about KVP, except for up here, right? If I increase my KVP, I've increased my scatter. So KVP is actually the enemy when it comes to scatter, right? So I would not necessarily want to jack with my KVP if I'm adding a grid or taking away a grid, right? The only thing I want to mess with anytime I'm messing with a grid is my mass, like I've just demonstrated here. Hopefully this is helpful. Thank you so much, and keep shooting those rays.